Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. We have a special guest. We have Mr. Brandon Presley, the Democratic candidate for the governor of Mississippi, who is currently in the Mississippi Public Service Commission, been there since 2007. So Mr. Presley, welcome. Thank you, it's good to be in Meridian. Absolutely, the campaign trail kicking up. Uh, one big topic that a lot of people have been talking about education. So if you are elected as governor, what are your plans on improving the education system in Mississippi? You know, to me, education is the foundation of everything that helps to move our state forward. It's not just only about educating our children, which is paramount, most important, economic development, community development. It all begins with education. And Governor William Winter used to have an old saying that the road out of the poorhouse runs by the schoolhouse. And the way we pull Mississippi out of poverty is to invest in education, to invest in not only our schools and our teachers, but our parents and our students. And so I believe the first thing we should do is to fully fund the Mississippi Adequate Education Program. The MAEP has been underfunded by Tate Reeves by billions of dollars since he's been lieutenant governor and governor. And only in a political year do you hear him even talk about fully funding our schools. I think we should do that every year. You know, I just got married a little over a month ago. And Caitlin and I, the first thing we do in our first month of being married is when uh, we got paid, we looked at what the house payment was. And that's the first thing we took out of that checking account. Well, the first thing state government should do is to take out the funds to fully fund our public education before we get to pet projects that legislators want, before we get to anything else. We need to put our money where our mouth is when it comes to public education. Fully funding the schools is a big part of that. Yeah, and another another big topic, not only education, but economic development. So uh, what are some ways you would want to build upon that in the state? I think one of the things we do in economic development is uh, kind of a twofold. Expanding Medicaid, saving our hospitals in Mississippi, not only protects our health care system, but it creates 16,000 good paying jobs in our state. Right now, we've got a health care crisis in Mississippi. We've got hospitals shutting down, services being taken away. Just last week, four more hospitals shut down inpatient care, meaning you can't stay more than 24 hours at that hospital throughout the state. If we expand Medicaid, not only do we help 220,000 working people, people who work every day for a living, but also we can create 16,000 good healthcare jobs in Mississippi. Uh, that's one way. Secondly is to look at how we modernize our economic development strategies in Mississippi. You know, not only do we need to go after big projects, obviously we need to, but also in a post-COVID economy where we see many people working from home and they're not going back to an office. How do we tailor our economic development strategies to make sure we're catching the jobs not only of today, but the jobs of the future. And I think that uh, we've got to have a strategy and we should have an emphasis on rural economic development. Mississippi is a big network of small towns. Look, Meridian's big compared to Nettleton, where I'm from. But still, in the grand scheme of things, even our bigger cities are not on the scale of what other states are. We need to target our economic development to working with local communities, particularly rural communities and small towns, to make sure they have the tools they need for economic growth uh, and to help the business community cut regulations and to be able to keep the doors open. One well, other way in which you do that is expand Medicaid so that our small business owners, workers, can continue to stay on the job and we can reduce their need to be away from work. You know, speaking of economic development, which, you know, is always a topic uh, through anything, but many businesses throughout the state, they're still trying to make the comeback from COVID right. after all the shutdowns. So what would you do to help the businesses get the employees they need, create a system that supports small businesses, as you just mentioned? Yeah, I think one of the key things is uh, we've got to have workforce development strategies that creates the jobs of today. And we need to look at, you know, right now I'm renovating two houses and you can't find people that'll do plumbing work, electrical work. We've got to get back in the mindset. I'm a big believer in a movement in this country called bring back shop class to high schools. Let's teach children how to go out and still learn a trade, to be able to do the work that needs to be done, whether it's plumbing, electrician, welders. There's a lot of money to be made today in those type of jobs in which too many times politicians have been elitist and look down upon blue collar workers and look down upon welders or electricians. We should want to foster those jobs in Mississippi as part of our economic development strategy. I'm a big believer in the community college system. I'm a product of community colleges. I believe we should be working with our community colleges to teach children that maybe they don't want to go to a four year university but they want to get a job today in a trade. They want to go out and become skilled labor. Let's get them the tools they need to do that. And it starts with working with our high schools 
and also with our community colleges in doing that. And I think that builds that labor force up. Right now, some of our biggest needs in the labor force are blue collar jobs. And they're jobs that are honorable. They're jobs where people make a good living. And for too long, politicians have looked down their nose at folks who do uh, uh, labor intensive jobs. I'm not that type of politician. I honor those people who are willing to go out and sweat and put in the work that they do on a blue collar job. We should be giving them the type of resources they need to succeed. And on the campaign trail itself, it's hot. All these ads running on TV across the state. So what are the ways you and your campaign are preparing to win the election mm -hmm. on November 7th? Well, we're, you know, we're going to every county in the state of Mississippi. Uh, Tate Reeves is hit out in the governor's mansion. He won't come out. We have, he will not agree to a debate. I'd like to challenge him again here today at, in Meridian. We said we'd do five debates. He's scared to debate me. If I had his record, I'd be scared to debate too. But we're going to go to all 82 counties in Mississippi, carry our message of cleaning up the corruption in state government, whether it be Brett Farr's $5 million volleyball court or the corruption we've seen run rampant, save our hospital system in Mississippi, get the sales tax off of groceries. Did you know, Emily, we have the highest sales tax on food of any state in the United States of America in Mississippi? Those are the messages we're going to be carrying to all 82 counties. Look, I like to campaign. I like meeting people. I don't want to be a governor hit out in the governor's mansion. I enjoy getting out seeing people. And we're going to carry that message throughout the state. And we're going to separate facts from fiction. And when the governor tells a bald-faced lie, we're going to call it a bald-faced lie. And I think that's the type of toughness that the people of Mississippi want to see in a governor, the type of backbone and guts. And I'm looking forward to the rest of this campaign. And lastly, anything else we should add if you could address people watching this why should they vote for you for governor? Well, I, you know, I would say that as Mississippians focus in on this election between now and November, I ask you to look at the facts. We've got corruption running wild in Mississippi, and we've got a governor that doesn't have any guts and hasn't got any backbone to do anything about it. When you go to vote in November, I ask that the voters of Mississippi think about who's got the, the guts and the backbone to take on the system, to clean up the corruption, to expand Medicaid and save our hospitals, and to get some work done to get the sales tax off of groceries. Tate Reeves has had 12 years, and in those 12 years, he's ran his mouth a lot more than he's got anything done for the people of Mississippi. I'll be a governor with guts and backbone. We'll get about the work of the people of this state. And if people want to learn more about your campaign, where can they visit you on social media? Where can they find you? Easy to find, brandonpresley.com. Brandon like the town of Brandon, Presley like my cousin Elvis, Elvis. Dot com. Are you really related to Elvis? Yeah, Elvis is granddaddy and my granddaddy were brothers. Wow. Yeah. That I is, would sing you a song here, you know, if we had yeah. time. <laughs> you, got, you got a guitar. We could, we could set that up. There All right. Go. Thank you so much, Mr. Presley, for joining us. Once again, Brandon Presley running for the office of governor for Mississippi. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.